Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, and this is my wife Samantha. Hello! And today we are watching Kill Bill Volume 2. What did you think of the first movie? It was violent. Super violent. <laughs> but it was really good, um, and I'm really excited for the sequel. As a reminder, I have not seen these, but you have. Yeah, so I have seen this one. I've definitely seen Kill Bill Volume 1 plenty of times, whereas Kill Bill Volume 2 I've maybe only seen once in my life. Um, so I'm sure there'll be stuff that I don't remember, but this is still your first time watching. Yeah, and this is part of our Tarantino series. So we went through True Romance. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, and Jackie oh, Brown. Yeah, Jackie Brown. Yeah, yeah. That, you really love that one. Yeah, so I'm excited to get into Kill Bill 2 and find out who Uma Thurman kills next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Instagrams, Twitch, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. This is me and my most masochistic. It's your baby. Jeez, that was loud. <laughs> <laughs> I roared and I rampaged and I got bloody satisfaction. And when I arrive at my destination, I am going to kill Bill. I loved that. <laughs> yeah, that was a cool recap and intro. Yeah, and like breaking the fourth wall. Who pines? The El Paso, Texas Wedding Chapel Massacre. It's too long. <laughs> if they come through Texas, I can play with them. Rufus, he's the man. I totally didn't realize that was... Samuel L. Jackson. I was gonna ask that, but we didn't get a clear picture of his face. It just sounded it sounds, just like yeah. him, yeah. You have no family? Mrs. Harmony, we're all the family this little angel's ever gonna need. This bitch is starting to miss me. <laughs> <laughs> she just needs a few minutes to get it together. She'll be okay. It's crazy because you know what's, what's coming. going to happen, yeah. The quick shots. How did you find me? I'm the man. What are you doing here? Wait, is that Bill? First time seeing him. Yeah. I'm looking at the most beautiful bride these old eyes have ever seen. He is not very scary. <laughs> your sweet side is your best side. You're the only one who's ever seen it. I'm knocked up. Jeez Louise. Slowly making their way. It's going to be a great environment for my little girl to grow up in. As opposed to killing human beings. Yeah. You want to come to the wedding? Only if I can sit on the bride's side. You'll find it a bit lonely on my side. Your side always was a bit lonely. This is so strange, <laughs> considering where it's going. Oh, here's Tommy. Call me Arlene. <laughs> Call me Arlene. Tommy, I'd like you to meet my father. The name's Bill. Well, it's great to meet you. Father? Did you come straight from Australia? Of course. <laughs> Bad luck for the groom to see the bride in her wedding dress. I guess I just believe in living dangerously. Oh. <laughs> I know just what you mean. <laughs> Which is the bride's side? Right over here. So nice. I know. If he's the man you want, go stand by. Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> What a crazy shot. Yeah, just keeps pulling back. I was like, where are they? No! Just like that, took them all out. He cut her way through 88 bodyguards. That wasn't really 88 of them. I guess they thought it sounded cool. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot. <laughs> she got a Hanzo sword? He made one for her. I pawned that years ago. Pawned it? It was priceless. In El Paso, I got me $250 for it. Wow. All she's got to do is come down to the club and start some shit, and we'll be in a fight. Start becoming afraid of you because she is coming. We're never going to find out what her name is. <laughs> it may have been on her airplane ticket. I saw comments. Yeah. That. that woman deserves her revenge. We deserve to die. But can't you tell time? There ain't nobody in here, man. <laughs> I'm the bouncer. There ain't nobody out there to bounce. 
<laughs> you don't have a job to do? No. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Before you leave, talk to Rocket. She's got a job for you to do. I want you to keep that shit kicker hat at home. It's getting ruined by this guy. The toilet is at it again. There's shitty water all over the floor. <laughs> That's the job? I'll clean it up. Mm-hmm. Oh. What a change in life to be some superior hitman going all over the world. Now he's just getting yelled at. She there? Oh. <laughs> Just underneath him. I could do things my way. I feel like he's suspicious though. Plus he already knows that she's coming for him. Right. Bill went and told him. One rich man in ten. I wonder if he was lying and he does have that sword. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> He was ready. I can't even imagine how bad that shit must stink. Having a sword doesn't do much when you get shot by a shotgun. How is she alive? I think he said he shot her with like rock salt. So it wasn't like bullets. It's like, oh. like salt or whatever. So it like just burns and hurts you, I think. Because if those were real, real shell or something, it would have just ripped her in half. Yeah, that's what I was like, <laughs> what? So he has a much worse plan for her. I just caught me the cowgirl. Ain't never been caught. How much? Well, that's hard to say, being that it's priceless and all. <laughs> you get your bony ass down here first thing in the morning with a million dollars in folding cash, the greatest sword ever made by a man. Oh, man. I don't know how she's going to get out of this. I feel like just insult to injury that he's selling her sword. <laughs> right? Digging up someone's grave? I'm done! Get me out of this hole! Give the old coffin off to the right. <laughs> You're going underneath the ground tonight. That's all there is to it. Act like a horse's ass. Bray his whole goddamn can right in your eyeballs. Man, that does have to be one of the worst ways to die. Buried alive. I would probably just try to aggravate him enough so that he would kill me so that I wouldn't be buried alive. Oh, God. Just slowly losing the light. Oof. That is terrifying. It's all the dirt. Panicking so much as burning through your oxygen. That's the other coffin? Ooh, I don't know, maybe. So terrifying. <laughs> so much weight on top of you? I don't even know if a light is helpful. It might just freak me out more if you could actually see that you're buried. This is freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth is she going to get out of that? Pai Mei was walking down a road when a Shaolin monk appeared, gave the monk the slightest of knowledge. The nod was not returned. Pai Mei appeared at the Shaolin Temple, inconsolable. Pai Mei sounds unhinged. <laughs> the massacre of the Shaolin Temple. Jeez. Of the monks inside. At the fists of the White Lotus. Sounds like Bill. He hits you at five different pressure points. Once you've taken five steps, your heart explodes. What? <laughs> he teaches no one a five-point palm exploding heart technique. I didn't even teach that. <laughs> a defiant eye, he'll pluck it out. Any American sass his way, he'll snap your back and your neck like they were twigs. Jeez. Yikes. He'll accept you as his student. Get in a fight? Friendly contest. <laughs> no sarcasm, no backtalk. Cool with the mirror. Yeah. Hates Caucasians. <laughs> Despises Americans. Nothing but contempt for women. That's not good. <laughs> 
Well, she's batting zero. <laughs> Already. A woman, American and Caucasian. <laughs> I am proficient in Tiger Crane style. <laughs> Not starting off great. No. Is he about to be impressed? <laughs> I don't know. I hope. You go to you, baby. I'm going to go to you. Wow. <laughs> what? See, look at father. the sound oh got to keep her arm yes well he's training her <laughs> He passed the test? I hate that. <laughs> the... Lady is on the I'm excited to see all of these lessons <laughs> come, come in. into play. <laughs> oh, already taking the skin off. Huh. Gotta be in the right mindset. There's the water. <laughs> oh. She's going for it now. Oh, her hands. What your bill you told you? I should be. That was the wrong move. No, if I did. Oof, like my knuckles hurt. Oh, this is torture. Uh. Oh, but she's using two hands. A nice bite, though. How long has she been in there? <laughs> Calm down a little bit. Oof, that's so small. Yeah. But if your enemy is three inches from you. Yep. Nice, those boots helped. Slipped right out of them. Or she has something like hidden inside her boot. Yes. Well, the flashlight definitely came in handy now. And like a weak spot, maybe? Yeah, a little hollow spot. <laughs> Oof. Oof. I'm like worried what's gonna fall through though. that better? <laughs> that was incredible. Even just like 10 minutes inside, the outside must feel like the greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> All the dirt and dust coming off her. The blood on her shirt. <laughs> May I have a glass of water, please? <laughs> oh, she's picking up the sword. Spent a million dollars in that? Yeah. And now at least they're both in one place, right? 
She was just already there. It's like her killer mode activated. Not great at pouring. Question was, which one is it? Regret. Bill thought she was so damn smart, and I tried to tell him she was just smart for a blonde. Oh, famous last words. <laughs> gonna like Stem. cut him with the sword too smart for a blonde a bite to the face or torso can bring death from paralysis within 20 minutes he got like four <laughs> bites you know i've always liked that word gargantuan i so rarely have an opportunity to use it in a sentence just struggling biggest r i feel is regret the greatest warrior i have ever met met her end piece of shit like you that woman deserved better that was fast. <laughs> Where's the snake? I know, right? I'd be so terrified of it. Your brother's dead. She put a black mamba in his camper. I mean, she was codenamed Black Mamba. Melanie Harhouse? Here. Beatrix Kiddo? Here. Beatrix. You go smoke some pot or something. I'll be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh! More feet. <laughs> right? Just not enough space to get the sword out. Oh, that might be enough. Jeez. Oh. Oh, Pretty evenly matched. Oh. That heel was brutal. <laughs> the sounds <laughs> right? for this fight? Just kicking the shit out of each other. She just rolled on top of his dead body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, swirly. <laughs> So many groin shots. <laughs> Let's pull her back in. Man, they've destroyed this place. Oh! He lied? I'm the only man I ever loved. Bill. <laughs> he said he pawned it. Guess that makes him a liar now, don't it? She's always filthy. <laughs> What did you say to Pi May to make him snatch out your eyes? I called him a miserable old fool. Bad idea. That's it? I killed that miserable old fool. <gasps> I poisoned his fish heads. <laughs> oh my god! And now I'm gonna kill you too. With your own sword, no less. Quite a villain. Bitch. worse than killing her. Ew! Ew! <laughs> Played it up to be this epic sword fight. Just snatched her eye. Oh, that was so gross. But it was also very satisfying. <laughs> right? Especially because she killed. All right. Bill. Man, why wasn't she just snatching people's eyes <laughs> left and right? Just everyone's eye. <laughs> like that's the most shocking way to fight somebody. <laughs> I hope she took all that money. She probably didn't. No, she just took the sword and walked out. She should have taken the other sword. Can you imagine? 
<laughs> Dual Hanzos. Esteban was a pimp. The Acuna boys, made up of the fatherless offspring of his whores, ran Acuna. Fine gentleman as yourself. I must warn you, young lady, I am susceptible to flattery. <laughs> I love his voice. Where's Bill? This boy was a fool for bronze. He we have met when I was back in business. My number one lady. Ugh. What a compliment. Well, I'm flattered. If you were driving a throat. My pussy wagon died on me. <laughs> <laughs> the pussy died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bill shot you in the head, no? I would have been much nicer. I would have just cut your face. Thanks. He's a gross man. <laughs> Billy, that the vehicle, I don't know. I will draw you a map. Do you know why I help you? No. Because he will want me to. Now that I don't believe. Yeah, I gave up that information pretty easily. There's a huge door. Oh, it's two doors. <laughs> <It's> still huge. <laughs> oh. Maybe you should move that. Breathe, mommy. Bang, bang! Oh, she got us, BB. Oh! That little BB was only playing possum. Impervious to bullets. Impervious to bullets, mommy. First time seeing her. That's when little BB fired. Bang, bang! Oh my gosh. <sighs> you are the best. Don't die. I was just playing. Did you dream of me? I dreamed of you. Every single night, baby. Oh, Emilio, not flapping. Visual image of life and death. Flapping on the carpet and a fish not flapping on the carpet. That was dark. Yeah. I shot mommy. I shot her for real. Does it hurt? Doesn't hurt anymore. You want to watch a video with me? Shogun Assassin. No, BB. Shogun Assassin is too long. No, it's not. I'll leave you ladies to it. Wild. It's so strange. My father was famous. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. That's what she watches before bed. Like, what does she even do now? She definitely went in thinking she was just gonna kill Bill, not find her daughter. I was just admiring your sword. A piece of work. Best sword ever. If you want to be old school about it, then we could wait until dawn and slice each other up if you don't settle down i'm gonna have to put one in your kneecap i'm just fucking with you try to go for that sword i don't know what her plan was though hers is right behind him incapable of believing anything you say how do you suppose we solve this dilemma yeah i have a solution ah! gotcha just toying with her a slight wave of euphoria you feel it no <laughs> too bad <laughs> How long does this shit take? <laughs> Clark Kent is weak. He's unsure of himself. He's a coward. Clark Kent is Superman's critique on the whole human race. You would have worn the costume of Arlene Plimpton, but you were born Beatrix Kiddo. Take the needle out. <laughs> Are you calling me a superhero? <laughs> Natural born killer. You're not a worker bee. You're a renegade killer bee. First question. Your life in El Paso is going to work. No, but I would have had baby. I think you would have been a wonderful mother, but you are a killer. So is he. Comes the $64,000 question. Specific. Why did you run away from me? Do you remember the last assignment you sent me? Accurate results in only 90 seconds. Longest 90 seconds or whatever it was. <sighs> Fuck. Somewhere on my journey, I had been spotted. Uh oh Sent an assassin of her own. Well, that's nice. Um, you can just leave it by the door. <laughs> good thing she dropped that. <laughs> Pretty good with that shotgun. But I'm a fucking surgeon. <laughs> I just found out that I'm pregnant. What is this? <laughs> just look at the strip. Such an awkward conversation between assassins. Easy to use. <laughs> And urinate. Blue means pregnant. I'll read it myself, thank you. Just go home. She went knife in her arm? <laughs> yeah, she chucked a knife and blocked it with the shotgun. Congratulations. <laughs> I liked that. 
I was a killer who killed for you. But once that strip turned blue, she deserved to be born with a clean slate. World of killers. Ended up happening anyways. Yeah. Letting somebody think somebody they love is dead when they're not is quite cruel. Just for the record. I overreacted. <laughs> Understatement. Is that your explanation? No, I didn't say I was going to explain myself. You and I have unfinished business. Oh, man. You ain't kidding. <laughs> Plan A taught you the five-point palm exploding art technique. Of course he did. Bad person. You're not a bad person. You're my favorite person. But every once in a while, you can be a real cunt. <laughs> What's gonna, like, is it actually gonna explode? What is the... It's five steps. <laughs> that was a lot for her. I mean, she loved Bill. Yeah, and find out she had a daughter with him. Not to kill Bill. Bald guy. <laughs> I forgot about that scene. Boston, I that this. was crazy. That's the credits for Bill. Oh, he's AKA Snake Charmer. Aww. The best nickname for last. All right, that was Kill Bill Volume 2. What'd you think? I loved that. I think it's crazy how different the films were. Yeah, uh, this one is much slower paced, way more dialogue. Mm -hmm. I mean, essentially the first volume, half that movie is just fighting. Yes. This film, it's already like laid all the groundwork and now you can have much more dialogue. The first one, there is a lot more to understand about the universe and the connection with all of the other assassins and with mm -hmm. Bill and the stakes of everything. Going in, knowing all of this information, it takes its time to kind of really play with every remaining assassin, which yes. is, it's pretty much just Bud and L, uh, California Mountain Snake. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the second one plays with itself for the action scenes. Mm -hmm. Whereas the first one, pure violence and action. Yeah. The second one, you're expecting a lot of things like the final showdown with California Mountain Snake. You think it's gonna be some epic sword fight. Yeah. They both have their Hanzo swords and she just whoop, plucks out the eye. There was a decent amount of like shocking moments in this one. Yeah, the second one's a lot more shocking. Yeah, that being one of them, I feel like that is the craziest scene. Yeah. Probably one of the craziest fights that wasn't a fight that I've ever seen. I mean, the fight leading up to that was absolutely epic. I mean, yeah. they were just kicking the shit out of each other, smashing all through that trailer. Yeah, and it reminded me of the fight in the first Kill Bill with Vivica Fox. Yeah. It just a lot of that, like, no messing around, like... Just straight to it. Yeah, just, and then just beating the absolute shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah. So that was really cool. I liked that fight scene, and I feel like they were such a good match for each other. I mean, really, they all were. They were all great assassins. Right. That was a really cool scene, but that I... That eyeball was so it's, disgusting. And then smashing it with her feet. Ugh. But More yeah. feet. <laughs> More feet. Lots of feet in this one. Everything was kind of like that. You expect this big final showdown. No, it's just the eye plucking. Or when she first comes to kill Bud. Yeah. And you think she's going to go in, maybe have this crazy fight. And no, Bud just shoots her with a shotgun and then buries her. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. Now, honestly, and I feel like the fact that because there's two films, it seems like we just watched like a series because I didn't even really think about the fact that that was still in this movie. Right. Oh yeah, I know. A lot happens in this one, surprisingly. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like an extremely long film. It's just over two hours. Yeah. But it squeezes so much in while still feeling like it's a little bit of a slower pace. Yeah, it feels like a slower paced movie than the first one because the first one's just so much visuals. Yeah. But this one, I feel like because it resolves things very quickly, it has all of these times for this amazing dialogue. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when Bud's dying and it takes like two minutes 
for Elle to give facts about a black mamba <laughs> when she's buried alive. That's a long time. I mean, you have like a few minutes of just black screen and just sound, mm-hmm. and it's terrifying. Yes, I was gonna say it's probably a tie for my favorite parts of these films. The sound, I think, is up there, might be number one. The sound and the music yeah. between both of them. I mean, the way that that whole scene where she's being buried and then it just gets completely silent and there's no light, there's no nothing, it's just silence. I definitely think I'm claustrophobic and that was so uncomfortable. I mean, I don't watch. I don't know any other movie scenes that I've seen where someone gets buried alive, but I would have to assume most if not all are not as stressful or as terrifying as this one. It's so realistic the way that they Yeah, portray. how how she gets slowly buried in and like they're nailing the coffin, the yeah. light slowly goes away and then when it is pitch black and the sound like you said now the sound in this is off the charts, accompanied by the music, it's always fantastic. It somehow brings music in that you wouldn't expect for that scene, yeah. that somehow works perfectly. Mm-hmm. We talked about that with the first Kill Bill. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I feel like that's the theme with this one at least, is how quick things are resolved. Like when she goes to meet Esteban to try to get information on where Bill is, mm-hmm. it's not this crazy back and forth. Once he was ready to give her an answer, he was like, Yeah, Bill's over here. Yeah, it was so strange. I honestly was like, is he lying to her? Like, (laughs) that was so easy. But, I mean, I feel like they all have a respect for each other. And they understand, like, okay, well, if I don't tell her, she's going to find him anyways. Yeah, and it ends with Bill, too. I mean, you're expecting this crazy showdown. I mean, we spent four hours almost to this point to get to the spot where she can fight Bill. And it's maybe 10, 15 seconds of some crazy awesome sword play especially the one where she like gets the sword to go back into the sheath is that's what it's called or whatever but she finishes it off with that five finger death heart punch and so that whole fight scene is over in under a minute yeah i was gonna say so sound was my first favorite thing and the choreography is the next thing. Yeah. A standout, I think, was the choreography at the very end with Bill. As they're sitting in those two chairs and they're fighting each other and like she's, her whole chair is moving to the side and everything. And just like you said, the sword going back in to like the sleeve or whatever you called it. (laughs) um, That was really, really cool to watch. And then I think his name was Paime. I think it was Paime. Sorry if I'm butchering that. The whole time when he's like kind of figuring out her skills and if she's like worthy of being trained, I guess. All of that was so cool too. The choreography. Yeah, I know. That's an amazing cutaway that honestly, probably the first time I saw this movie, I didn't realize how impactful that little moment is of her training with him. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you had a comment during the reaction of how you were excited to see all of this training play into the rest of the movie and it played into every single part that training her getting out of the coffin was her training from that moment Mm -hmm. how she defeated l by taking out her eye Mm -hmm. that was because of her training that she learned that there plus it was almost like the revenge of doing the same thing he would have done to her because she she killed killed him. him yeah and then all the way to the end of how she killed bill was from that technique that he taught no one except for her. Yeah, which was crazy. I mean, obviously when it came up, I was like, I wonder if she knows. Because I just had a feeling from the get-go, like they were going to be very close. You're kind of shown that a little bit in the first volume when she's able to get a Hanzo sword. Mm -hmm. She's clearly capable of achieving stuff that no one else is possible of doing. People are breaking oaths to satisfy her. Mm -hmm. So you get that little hint that maybe she will learn this technique. And when she busted that out, you recognize that like immediately. Yeah, as soon as she started banging on his chest, it was like, (laughs) oh shit. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, the way that they play with telling you exactly how things are going to be, yet starting you at an earlier spot, like the beginning of the movie with the massacre. Mm -hmm. We know everyone's going to get massacred. Everyone here is gonna die. And you go through this 10 minute scene of awkwardness because 
Bill seems kind of nice a little bit. Yeah, that was very odd. I was not expecting Bill to seem so chill. Yeah, it's very strange because you know the outcome, yet you're going through it, waiting for this just destructive moment to happen. And then it does it again at the very end of the movie. They're having a conversation still, and you know Bill's dead. There's no saving him. He's already lost. He's dead. So you still have this conversation knowing the final outcome. So it's interesting how they play with telling you the ending, but then coming all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, but I feel like it also comes down to the respect that they do all have for each other. I mean, you also had Bud and Elle. She released the Black Mamba. He's dying on the floor. And as much as it's like a kind of a fuck you to him. She is just sitting there talking to him and telling him about this snake and all of that. Maybe not a respect for everybody, but it's to the point where it's like, you're done, so I'm gonna speak my piece here. Once they've accomplished their mission or something, yeah. they're not going overboard. Like, I mean, when Bud was burying her, he buried her with a flashlight. Mm -hmm. He could have just kept macing her or beat her up or whatever, mm -hmm. but once they achieve a certain spot, they're done. Like when Beatrix took out the eye, she could have still just killed her and taken both Hanzo swords and the money or something, but it's not about that. She defeated her opponent mm -hmm. and kept going. Yeah. And also about the whole telling you the ending and coming back. I mean, Tarantino loves to play with time, time. Yeah. and jumping all around. Um, so it's nothing really new, but it's always so interesting because even at the beginning of this movie, it starts with that great recap slash intro yeah. of uh, Uma Thurman saying like, I've killed everyone and I'm on my way to Bill. So it's like, you know, I mean, obviously the, the name of the movie is Kill Bill, but she's telling you everything that happens, I'm going to somehow survive. Yeah. But it doesn't change how stressful stuff is like when she's fighting someone yeah. or she's buried alive. It's like, how the hell is she going to survive this? Yeah, no, because she gets into situations and she's fighting the best of the best. That it's like, I really am in suspense because I don't know how this is going to play out. Yeah. Even if you know how the very end of it's going to end. You still don't how know how. are you going to get there? Yeah, you still don't know how you're getting there. So it's amazing. I mean, the fight choreography, the music, the acting from everyone. Uh, Uma Thurman's such a badass. Yeah. So I love the Kill Bill movies and it was awesome to experience them again with you. Yeah, no, I love these films. I can't believe it's taken me so long to watch them, but I'm really glad that we're getting to like explore all the Tarantino films, but really enjoy getting to see these almost back to back, a couple weeks apart. Yeah, no, it's been excellent. And there was something I wanted to talk about after we saw the first one that I can talk about now. I don't remember when I saw this or if it has any sort of merit or any weight behind it or anything like that, but I know Tarantino I think only wants to do one more movie. Some people think it might be Kill Bill Volume 3, mm. and a lot of people, I don't know a lot of people, I have seen somewhere that a potential storyline could be Vivica, uh, Vivica A. Fox's daughter. You remember how in the mm -hmm. first movie she was like, if you grow up mm -hmm. and you still feel some sort of way about this, come find me, that that could be a, a storyline for Kill Bill Volume 3. Interesting. Or now with the super fame of Maya Hawk. Yeah. From Stranger Things, Uma Thurman's daughter, Ethan Hawke's daughter as well, that she could play BB. That would be really cool. So if he does do a Kill Bill Volume 3, I do feel like you have some awesome directions you can go in that still makes sense to the overall story. Yeah, because it's like, kill Bill and Bill's dead. What are you going to do? But there is a lot that you could do still. Right. You still have revenge or you still have BB who, hey, she's already a killer. She killed her goldfish. She grew up for four years in the life of a murderer. <laughs> so maybe she does have some tendencies to go be an assassin or something. Yeah. So I don't know. But um, awesome movie. Tons of fun. So this was great. Yeah, no, I enjoyed this very much. I am definitely a big Kill Bill fan now. Cool. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.